Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Today we are going to rehouse one one of the spiders that we picked up at the uh, the Bristol show, and that's the Syrupagopus von Worthy. Now this is a an Asian fossorial spider, and they're really really pretty. So we're going to pop it in here. This is only a small spider, so this this tank in itself could have been a little bit smaller, but it will be fine, it will grow into this nicely. Now, because these spiders require a good amount of uh, humidity, they like a moist substrate. It's very important for them. You don't want to let these guys dry out, they really don't do well. Okay. We're going to give him plenty of substrate. This is going to be a really simple setup. Very, very simple. There we go. I'm just going to compact it down a little bit. Nothing too serious, just a little bit. So what we're aiming for is we've got, as we said, it's a fossorial spider. That doesn't mean to say that we're never going to see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and make this up to actually encourage our spider to spend some time outside, or at least in the mouth of its burrow. I think. So what we're going to do is we're going to perhaps Tuck this in like so. And we're going to bury the top of it. We've got some of our beastie substrate here. We'll whack a bit of that in. Now then, there seems to be a lot of um, sort of speculation, I suppose you could say, as to why would you do a starter burrow for your fossorial spider. As bearing in mind, digging is its main pastime. Now, the reason we do this, the reason we're, we're actually we're, we're creating a divot in here. And that's because these spiders generally are quite nervous. You'll find all your fossorial spiders, if they can't hide away, they're going to be very, very nervous. And we really don't want them thrashing around and all the rest of it. So by giving them a starter burrow, even if it's not ideal for them, it will give them somewhere to hide away, which will keep down the stress factors, which is really important. We don't, we don't want them getting all upset. So what we're going to do, we're going to put this so what we're trying to achieve is something that's nice to look at but still fit for purpose you see we're not going to need all of this Leave this little bit at the front here and we'll leave that open because once it actually gets in and starts settling down it will dig all of this up and the majority of this in the front here will all get covered up and then what we can do is when she finishes all of her excavations we can tidy it all up put our moss back in again so it all looks nice again but hopefully her home would have been built so we're going to give that a bit of a soak down Also, because we've made this with the clay balls in the bottom, 
it means that we can actually soak the soil and you'll see through the front there you'll see where it's seeping down into it so this is actually just barely damp and this is wet so what will happen is is this will drain down into the balls at the bottom and then it's slowly but surely it will feed back up again so it's important that for these spiders they may maintain a moist substrate this helps them in molting and just general day-to-day -day living they really don't do well if you if you allow them to dry out so what we're going to do we're going to put the, the water bowl up the top here so that hopefully she won't bury it if we put it in the front there it will be buried immediately so we're going to put it up the top leave it there because what you will find is although these guys will hide away quite a bit in the daytime in the evenings and of a night time they will come out and have a wander around so if she's thirsty, she'll find that water bowl and make use of it. It's very important that they, they still have access to water. It's a bit of a myth to think that your fossorial spider doesn't need water because it lives in a hole all its life. It doesn't. It does come out and move around quite a bit. Right then, so that is it. That's a real simple, easy enclosure but it's going to be fit for purpose and it's not half bad to look at so all right, if we come and have a look at this this is the Serapagopus von Worthy or the Vietnamese earth tiger you see there she's a very very pretty spider now we got these from uh, spa spiders and I must admit I'm very impressed with uh, all of the spiders that I've seen that they produce and they have for sale these guys are really really first-class spiders They're lovely now being an Asian Asian spider he's come from Vietnam and they are prone to being quite defensive and they're more than happy to look after themselves and they are very very fast as well we're going to do we're going to just pop this in here and we're going to try and get her to walk out nice and gently we'll come and we'll have a nice close look at her coming through here she comes always be wary of your fingers and you see she's very very quick the last thing we want is her running out altogether we've not had any aggression yet we just want her to leave her tub but she's rather reluctant you see how she's arching her body she's like no I don't want to go this is a much nicer house for you let's see if we can back her up there we go She did not want to leave that tub. And there she is. <laughs> well, there you go. There she was. Now that in itself, really, has actually proven a point that we were talking about earlier on. By making that starter burrow, you can see she didn't want to leave her tub. That's because she's webbed that up. That's her security. Although it doesn't look very secure, does it? But to her, that's home. That's where she wants to be. Now we've taken her out of there and we put her into her nice new home which she's got to get familiar with and you'll see now she's gone down in there this is all nice and damp she's down there in the dark and she doesn't she won't feel threatened she'll feel at home so she will settle in real quick now um, so general care of these guys these are very much like your uh, lividums and things like that these, as we said, they need a nice moist substrate, a reasonable depth of substrate. You can see there, we're pretty much, we're like three quarters of the way up to the, to the top here. They don't need much surface space, so we can fill it right up. This needs to be kept moist. 
We can do that with a MOS that helps lock it all in. Now, temperature wise, we're looking at uh, anywhere between 75 and 85. They're perfectly happy. They do like quite a warm environment. And this helps with the moisture as well. So with the two there as well, you're looking at um, a humidity of around about the same as your temperature. So 75 to 85% will give them a really, really nice environment. Now, as you saw there, she's quite small. They will actually get quite large. These guys will get up to around about five inches or so, and um, they make for a really, really impressive looking spider. They are a very, very pretty spider when, when mature. And we don't know what the sexes are with, with these. We've got another one as well, and we don't know what they are, but when we get some molts, we can check them out. Now, um, food-wise, at this size, they'll take on um, small male dubia roaches, no problem whatsoever. Red runners, they'll mop them up. Um, but the thing to do with these, with all your fossorial spiders, don't throw the food down the hole. An awful lot of people, when they're feeding, they drop it down the hole and they wonder why they haven't seen their spider for months on end. And this is because it doesn't need to leave its home if you keep throwing food down the hole. So what we will do with these is we will, when they're settling in, when we first move them like this, we will literally just put food in, let them feed, put food in, let them feed. We just want to get, get a few meals inside them to make sure that they're actually settling in and they've got a little bit of body weight about them. Then once we know that they're happy and secure, we can lay off the food and then what we will do is we will literally wait for her to start poking her toes out the, out the door and then once we get to that stage she will come out and start looking for food and this is where we want to be so as soon as she starts doing that we can pop a small food item in so for uh, even for an adult you could put in a female uh, a full-grown female red runner and that will be ample food and the trick is is we're feeding smaller items so that we get to see our spider more if we throw in a big dubia roach she'll get bloated disappear for a couple of weeks and never see her again so we can work them and encourage them to come out and put themselves on show a little bit more all through their bellies so and it will work a treat and you'll get to see your spider a lot more which is what it's all about who wants to keep a pet whole no one. Right then, well I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, nice general care sheet on these guys. They're very, very simple to look after. And uh, yeah, try them. They're really pretty. Right then, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. I'll see you soon guys.